Well, welcome back to the channel, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can catch loads of fish using just one meter of pole. Okay, so welcome back to the channel. Now I'm at the beautiful tunnel bound found today on the house pool, and I'm going to show you a little tactic that can really, really pay off. Whether you're pleasure fishing or in the match, this little short pole tactic can be really effective. Now, what do I mean by short pole? I don't mean like four meters or five meters. I mean literally fishing right here in front of your keep nets. So if you can imagine in a match, I'd have my keep nets positioned in front of me, and then I'm literally gonna fish right here, just in front of them, literally, well, using one meter of pole, half of my top kit. Now it's a method that you're not gonna catch on all day, but you can pick fish off throughout the session. And when you sort of add those fish into your fish that you've caught, maybe shallow or across to the island, those extra 10 or 12 fish that you catch right here, they're often better fish, could be a nice little bonus for the end of your session. All we've got bait wise, let's have a look at the bait first. I've just got some lovely six mil meat. And all I've done, every time I've like gone out to feed like at five meters or across, I've just literally dribbled in three or four bits of meat just there. And I'll do that throughout the day. And the whole idea, the whole plan is to just periodically drop on that It'll get better as the day goes on, but I'll start on other things and then every now and again I'll drop on this short one, pick up an odd fish, leave it, rest it, build it back up again. But, trust me, fishing right down here, not only is it fun, it can be really effective as well. Often you catch big F1s and carp there that are just hiding there, they're just eating those odd little bits of bait that you sort of drop in, maybe when you're catapulting bait, odd bits fall out, or when you're filling your cad pot up, it might drip, like drop in the edge. So meat for me is the only bait I'd consider. I'm looking to try and catch those better fish and I know that meat is just that bait. Now rig wise, simple stuff really. I've got a four by 10 F1 maggot. It's probably three foot deep there. Um, the, the rig's not really that important. I've just got a bulk and one dropper for those who are interested in the four inch hook length. What is important though is this bit. I've literally got four inches of line between the connector and the float. That's the shortest you can have at tunnel. If I was allowed shorter, I would. I've got back shots halfway between just to keep everything tight. The reason why this short line is so important is I'm right on top of the float and every time that float moves, I just want to lift it like an inch out of the water, just lift it a fraction, lower it back in and it just makes the whole thing so much easier. If you use a longer length of line, you strike, you're striking your meat off all the time. You don't want to do that. And that's really, really important when you're fishing so close to you. Elastic, now this may surprise some of you, but I'm actually using 15 Jura slip. Now this is way heavier than I'd ever use for F1s normally, but you've got a, this is a unique situation. If I was fishing out in the pond a bit more, I'd use a lighter elastic, have it like streaming out the pole tip, because I've got to like judge shipping back with a pole. Whereas when I'm fishing just here, I can't allow the fish to run around because I'm potentially gonna spook the rest of its rest of the mates. So I need a, a a strong elastic, the 15 euros that's perfect. You'll see in a minute when I start fishing, you often hook them, they come straight to the top and you can net them before they really know what's going on. It's really important that, like I say, I'm not looking to build, this is not a swim that I'm gonna fish all day long. I'm literally gonna drop on it, catch two or three quick fish, then go somewhere else. Okay, so as far as feeding this little cheeky little closing line goes, all I've done today when I've been fishing across, five meters every time I go to ship out I've literally just thrown in two or three bits of meat literally just just there and that's enough just as the day goes on getting the fish used to that odd bit of bait going in but then when I actually go and fish the line I tighten it up by using the cad pot I've got that position right on the end of the pole tip so I'm being as accurate as I can be just because we're fishing close in it doesn't mean you've got to neglect your ideas from elsewhere you've still got to be accurate I've got a little marker here on the pole, so I'm going to hold it there every single time because I've accurately plumbed up, I've found a nice smooth bit of gravel to fish on and I'm just going to pop the bait in and then lower my hook bait right on top of it. Like I say, I'm using a Bulkham 1 so it gets the hook bait down there nice and fast and then we're right on it there. Like I say, I've fed this now for... Well, I've been fishing elsewhere for a couple of hours so it's had a couple of hours of those odd little bits of meat dropping in you imagine in a match where I'd have three keep nets in front of me here, I'd have them all pegged out so that they can't move, that's really important, and I'd just be dripping meat off the end of that keep net throughout the match. And I'd just drop on this every time I felt like I needed somewhere else to go. I know for a fact that if I dropped here throughout the match, I'd catch a quick fish or maybe two. 
<clears throat> what tends to happen is, there we go. What tends to happen is, look at that, that could be a carp that one. It gets better as the match goes on. So your runs of fish maybe go from, whoa. You know, your, your runs of fish maybe go from one or two to four or five. And all of a sudden, because you're fishing so close in, those four or five fish are a decent weight. There we go, nice F1. You see, even though I'm fishing that 15 elastic, nice F1. Even though I'm fishing that 15 elastic, then fish can pull plenty out. And if I was to use like an 11 or something like that, I'd just be getting pulled all over the lake, which is not what you want when you, you just want to literally drop on this and catch a fit, quick fish. Right, so another 10 cubes in that. Right on my marker. And back in. So yeah, if you imagine your keep nets are there in front of you, you don't, I'd use like camping pegs, tent pegs to like attach them to the bank so that they're out, out the way. And then the keep nets in front of you. Now, I think we're more worried about the keep nets spooking the fish than the fish actually are. They're used to them being in the water and they know that it's like a safe place because people just don't fish for them there. However, at this place they do. And this close in line can be an absolutely deadly little spot to fish. There you go. And the fish there. See that 15 just brings them up pretty quick. Importantly, I don't know if you noticed, I sort of brought the fish around this side rather than playing it in front of me. I've sort of brought it around to one side, got the fish under control, got him in the net, nice and quick. Same, I'd have my net down here, trying my best not to disturb it too much. Okay, so we just had that one. It might be a little while till we get another one because it splashed about a bit. But that is kind of the game with this line. Obviously, it gets better as the session goes on. The more you feed it, the stronger it gets. And like I say, oftentimes your runs of fish go from one or two to four or five later in the session. I'm happy just to sit and rebuild. You, but like, I, I kind of liken this to when we used to canal fish when I was a kid. You know, you'd fish for perch around your keep nets as like a little spot to go on, like when we used to fish the Staney. We'd fish for roach out in the canal, and then when it went quiet or you topped it up or something, you used to just come back in, fish catch your 20 or so perch really quick, and then go back out on your roach again. And this is a little bit what this is like. Whenever you feel like your shallow needs a rest or your island swim needs a rest or your short pole needs a rest. Drop in in front of your keep nets that you've just dribbled in bait all day. Catch a couple of quick fish and then you can get back on with your match. So one thing that I struggled with getting my head around when I first started fishing this line last spring was the lack of movement. I'm so used to fishing further out in the lake where you get a lot of indications, a lot of liners. This is the very essence of setting a trap and waiting for like one fish to come in because I'm just sitting here, literally no indications on my float whatsoever. And then out the blue, after a few minutes, it'll, it'll go under with a fish on. Now for me, that's really hard to do because I'm always an angler who's feeding and trying to make stuff happen. But with this, it's not, it doesn't really happen like that. You're just literally waiting for one fish to come in at a time. I say I'll occasionally throw a bit of bait over, but I'm quite happy to just sit over that little pot full of bait that I've fed and wait for a fish to come in. And here we go. So exactly as I explained it, you know, pull the fish to one side. So that's exactly as I explained it. A little trap, little pile of bait, just a cad pot full. Sit and wait, sit and wait. Absolutely nailed. So there we go. Nice little F1. Taking on that really, really close in line. That's exactly as I explained it. So I set that little trap. It was nice and patient, and then eventually the float just absolutely buried. It's not a line that's gonna revolutionize your fishing or anything like that but when combined with other methods, other tactics throughout the day, 
it can get you ahead, it can get you that extra 20, 30 pound throughout the match. It could be the difference between winning and losing.